Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast for a very exciting first ever Tour de France Femme Avec Swift preview, which we'll be going through just like in all our other ultimate GC or Grand Tour previews, rather the every stage with our predictions for each stage winner, our predictions for or, and an overview of GC, Green, KOM, and obviously the white jersey will go through the strongest GC teams, the sprinters here, and maybe some outsiders for stages as well, as well as, yeah, an overview of this parkour, which, just to let you know, they start in Paris, so they start doing the sprint stage that we typically see on stage 21 in the men's Tour de France. They have that as the first stage, and then it's actually heavily backloaded in terms of climbing. The last two stages is an eight-stage race, The last two stages, seven and eight, each have will have five category one climbers between them with, I don't even think, a category two before that. So heavily backloaded and whether you're just starting out on your cycling journey or are looking for those final tune-ups ahead of a big event or race, Zwift is the online cycling platform that makes things fun. There are nine different worlds, thousands of kilometers of virtual road, including replicas of real world climbs like Alp du Zwift and Ven Top, workouts, training plans, and events and races for every level of rider. The massive community means you're never alone, especially if you join the LRCP club on Zwift to stay in the loop with when Benji and I are hopping on for a social spin to find out more about the Tour de France fam avec Swift, if this podcast doesn't do a good enough job or Swift <laughs> in general, or for a free seven day trial, head to Swift.com through the link down below. But what do you think about the route, Benji? It's concentrated. Yeah. And goes in Paris then heads east to the Alsace region. Do you think they were right to backload it like this? Yeah. I don't really care too much about the geography as in like, Oh, it starts there in France or goes there. I'm not that into that part, but When it comes to the shape of the race, it was very important to me personally to see a backloaded race because I wanted it to be entertaining towards the end. And I feared that, let's say that there's a mountain stage on stage two and stage four and another one on stage eight, for example, then there's a big chance that we see a clear difference on stage two and four when it comes to GC. And the race is kind of decided there. And that's the thing I... I wanted to see in the parkour to try and avoid a situation like that. And that's what they did here, which I really like. They made a situation where GC is likely going to be open until the seventh stage on which shit will hit the fan. And then we'll see who the strongest climbers are. And um, yeah, it's, it's honestly also a bit of a parkour that neutralizes a potentially very dominant Van Vleuten in the first six stages. Well, that's the thing with the retirement of Ander van der Brecher last year. There is not really anyone that can touch Van Vleuten on the pure climbs. And these aren't like 5K, 6% climbs either we're talking about. We're talking about 14 kilometers, 6.5% after doing 9.4Ks at 8% for the Col du Petit Ballon to open up the stage. And then they do the Col du Place of Arsel. That we know we're in the Alsace Lorraine region, 7.1Ks at 8.3%. That's before they even do the Grand Ballon. So like... They, yeah, we we know AVV is the dominant GC rider at the moment. Uh, she doesn't have as strong a team as SD Works, but this is the team she does have confirmed around her. Shayla Gutierrez, this is Movistar, obviously. Van Vleuten, Alena Sierra, who's been very good. Aud uh, Bianic, Emma Norsgaard, and pa- Paula Andrea Patino. Patino was good in uh, Burgos in the mountaintop finish, but... It, it's not as good as um, as SD works, Benji, overall. Norsgaard and Sierra are good, but Norsgaard will be going for her own sprints. But I don't think that's – like, she doesn't need a sky train, right? She just needs to be brought to the banks of those climbs safely and, and Van Vleuten will do her thing. Exactly. I think when it comes to this squad, their focus is going to be, first of all, main priority – Von Vleuten trying to keep her safe throughout the stages that are not the pure mountain stages and on the pure mountain stages get her to the bottom of the climb and try and launch her so that she can do her thing on the climbs. That's how I see the squad. I think that Patinho is a key part of that. I think she is indeed her strongest domestique in the climbing. I think Sierra will play a big role in that as well. I think she's likely going to be uh, the second mountain domestique 
just before Patino. That's how I see the order personally in my head at least. And next to that, like the Norsgaard, I don't think Norsgaard is going to be that much the support for Van Vleuten perhaps in this race. She's more going to focus on the uh, earlier parts there. That's how I see the squad at least. But like you said, not the strongest squad in the world, but if you have Van Vleuten, then you can uh, beat all the best squads in the world in some occasions anyway. And for example, Van Vleuten broke a, she broke a bone in Roubaix last year. She didn't do Roubaix this year, even though it was dry. And now we do not have a Roubaix stage or cobble stage in this TDFF Avex Swift, but we do have stage four, which is the, I think they're called the Chemin Blanc, which is white gravel roads. It's not the same as cobbles though. Like Van Vleuten's done very well at Strada Bianca. Yeah. So I'm drawing a bit of a long bow here. Yeah. But <laughs> as, as Benji said, they're going to be trying to get through these stages without incident. There's gravel descents. I understand a little short gravel descent on the second of the four sectors. The key is getting AVV healthy and in range for those last two stages. And yeah, and the, that takes us to the other team, which will be trying to put her under pressure, Benji, which has really, really strong rulers. SD works. I think Mulman is and Vollering, their pure climbing is almost very similar to me, actually, in some points. But I think Follering's the overall GC leader. We have Kopecky is probably the best overall rider in the st- in the race. And this mirrors to me, Benji. To me, Movistar are UAE and SD Works are Yumbo. They have Kopecky, who's Wout van Art level. Like, you see how she's ridden in the classics this year. Unbelievable. Not really the GC threat with the pure climbing. And then you've got Vollering and Mulman. And how are they going to balance that in that first uh, sort of four stages? They've got Chantal van den Black, Majerus and Royce, so much firepower and engines there, a lot of whom can get over hills no problem too. Do you think, to me, they got to run a two-liter strategy? That's the only possible way they can beat AVV is to have Vollering and Mulman as two leaders and you try and get one up the road with your rulers in these early stages when Movistar can't react as well exactly that's a situation i see as well and that's where movistar needs to protect von vleuten from teams like this to try and make sure that they can't pull this on von vleuten for example but let's say first six stages of this race there's a few in there that have hills like you mentioned and there's a situation where sd works is able to indeed get multiple riders in a breakaway can bridge one of their leaders to there. Movistar will need all hands on deck to be able to neutralize such moves. And the key for SD Works to me is making sure they isolate von Vleuten on the non mountain stages where possible. Those hilly ones, if possible, isolator will be difficult because, again, Sierra and Patino are good domestiques at Movistar. So that will be hard to do. But if they can isolate von Vleuten on those stages, then they can try and get riders up the road and so forth. Because von Vleuten is is super strong, but she might not be able to respond to every single move. And I think that's the same thing you're mentioning. If they are able to create a situation where Von Vleuten is relatively isolated and they can roll attacks on her, then that gives options. But and she might I panic. fear that. What, sorry? She might panic. She panicked in the Olympics road race. Yeah, exactly. But the fear that I have is if they don't do it in the first six stages and they wait for the climbs to roll attacks, then oh, it's going to yeah. be too late because then Von Vleuten will anticipate that yeah. and she will come to the first climb on that seven stage and hopefully is already on the screen because I think we'll have two and a half hours instead of two hours yeah. now. I think there was a change in that. So I hope we have that first climb in because I expect Von Vleuten to anticipate and say to herself, okay, these people are all going to attack me, so I'll attack them first. And if they wait until the climb to uh, launch an offensive on von Vleuten, then it's going to be too late. Now, if, for example, on stage 7 or 8, we have a situation where they go over the first few climbs, we'll see the parkour in a bit, and we come into a valley section before the final climb, and it's a reduced group in von Vleuten solo for our team, they need to attack her in the valley and not the final climb, for example. But I'll specify that when we come to the stages where that actually matters in this podcast, because uh, it's a bit more difficult now to have a grasp of what I'm saying without actually having seen the the profiles yet but yeah that's how i see the strategies of both sd works and movistar at least to fight against each other but it's not the only team sd works that 
needs to try a multi-leader strategy, in my opinion. FDG is one of them, but I feel like we've got nah. a squad. We've got a squad. Cavalli, Peter Pludwig, Grace Brown, Muzic, Mahiline, and Guazzini. Now, looking at the squad, based on this year, Cavalli's the best rider when it comes to GC. In the Giro Don, two weeks ago, she was also stronger than Utrecht Ludwig, but was that because she was significantly stronger yes. or because Utrecht Ludwig was in the Cesena stage a bit behind because of being weaker on that day and then folded into a domestique role later in that race as a consequence? Or Cavalli is the, the best. Okay. No multi-leader strategy, not even attempting it? I mean, you can, you can with maybe Music or Ludwig, you can, or Grace Brown. Grace Brown's a, you know, she can the ride domestic. all day, but, and she's Australian, okay. so that means she's even better. But <laughs> I, I think you'd go with Cavalli trying to take a stage somewhere and also uh, just trying to podium GC. I just, if I'm Van Vleuten, I'm not afraid of Muzic or Ludwig. I think she knows on the pure climbs she can toast them, whereas Cavalli dropped her, I think it was on a descent, and it was the day after Van Vleuten had crashed on the descent, still won the stage in the Giro Rosa. But I think Cavalli might be a better descender. We know that Annemiek Van Vleuten's weakness is probably going too fast in descents and crashing mm-hmm. herself out. We saw on the Olympic road race in, uh, in Brazil. Was it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so that that's a risk. She did send you a Rosa, didn't cost her. Maybe Cavalli can put her on pressure on the sense. But yeah, I think I think they got to play it easy, Benji. I reckon let Ludwig go for a stage. Oh, in the break too. Ludwig in the break can win a stage. I think so as well. Ludwig in the break can win stages, but perhaps K Wem is an option for her as well. But I fear that she's also going to be wanting to try GC at least in this race. And that also brings me to Muzic, who I think will be fighting for White, as there's only, I think, three riders on the start list that might be going for it. Muzic, Labu at DSM, and also Van Androoy at Trek, who was 20 years old and She's was good. sixth at Burgos, so she might be also on that list. Now, I think they need to try for to go for that as well with Muzic. And yeah, we're getting a lot of goals for this team now, but I feel like it's worthy to go for White with Muzic and... I don't know. Will there be a competition, you think, of being the best French rider in GC in this race? I think being the best French rider plus going for white is quite a fair bit of exposure and something worth genuinely targeting. And that's why I don't think they should be super aggressive with Muzic in like the first early stages, yeah. even though I'm not sure she's even that good on that terrain anyway. She should be in survival mode. Trek Segafredo, Benji just alluded to, another team with a lot of different priorities. Remember, these are only six women teams not the eight you see in the men's Tour de France. So it's even tougher to balance. Leia Thomas, who's domestic, Elisa Longoborghini, who I presume will be their main GC rider, although Van Anroy as well is maybe they can try something like SD Works. Cordon Rago is their only French rider. Then Van Dyke, who just won, I think uh, there was like two TTs in the Bauer's Ladies Tour, or just one? Uh, no, there were two. There's a prologue and a TT. She won both of them. She's in good shape. And they have Balsamo. So again, I think. I think this team is unlike SD Works, where it's I can't tell what the priority is between Capecchi and GC. I think the priority here is Balsamo and yep. then seeing what Longaborghini can do on GC. I think so as well. With SD Works, I'm actually leaning less towards Capecchi and more towards GC. Really? Although the stage wins with Capecchi are going to be a priority for that team as well. I think GC is going to be more important in the grand scheme of things. When it comes to Trek, I'm leaning hardcore for for that team towards balsamo over gc because the gc team here in trek is worse than the gc squad of sd works as simple as that while balsamo is better than capecchi sorry i know i'm belgian i'm not supposed to say that but balsamo is better yeah Yeah, exactly and even when it comes to the punchy sprints she had a godlike sprint in tour de swiss where she was literally sprinting against punchers and climbers on an uphill finish i think Muzic came second there and Balsamo beat her on the line or something. That's a vague memory I have of that race, at least. And yeah, I think she's more versatile than people think. And I think she's a, a real potential chance to get with Kopecky. But I think Balsamo might be having a small advantage there. You might disagree with me when it comes to the potential green jersey victory. I think so, particularly compared to Vibers. I think Vibers, yeah. 
yeah, I don't know. I think she did beat Lippert in that Swiss stage you're mentioning, yeah. but no Voss, no Kopecky. I'll wait. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not a full convert yet. Speaking of Jumbo Visma, they bring Rihanna Marcus, Rihanna Marcus, sorry, very strong rider. Anna Henderson, you see her in the classics every year now. Swinkles, Voss needs no introduction. Lebecki and Rug. This is not a GC focused team. This is going for stage wins, uh, from my perspective, and there's a lot that suit Mariana Voss uh, as well in this parkour, which we'll get to shortly. Uh, Bike Exchange haven't confirmed their team yet, but uh, they have to be bringing the absolutely informed Christian Faulkner, who couldn't stop winning one two stage at the Giro Rosa, as well as Amanda Spratt, uh, Manly, Zigart, Santesteban, Rosemann Gannon, but that isn't confirmed, but I'd expect Spratt, at least the Australian, yeah. for GC. I do want to mention that I keep getting surprised and more surprised by the versatility of Alexandra Manley because I swear in the women's tour, there were sprint stages where she competed because she has a proper damn sprint. She was second to Lorena Wibis on stage three there in Gloucester, but she's also fifth on the uphill finish onto a black mountain climb. And that climb was roughly in the group too. 5.2 kilometers at 6% in the same group was incredible climbing performance. Same group as Faulkner. Like, I think she unironically is incredibly versatile and incredibly underrated in that sense. But I'm not sure the parkour of the first six stages is hard enough for that to come out versus, for example, uh, a Kopecky. So I think, let's say oh, there's Kopecky's a medium mountain underrated stage. climber. Yeah, but let's say there's a medium mountain stage with a flat finish. I'll pull the card of Manly over Kopecky because I think Never. bike exchange can... I disagree. Olympic road race, Kopecky. Where'd she come? She's, Kopecky's climbing's underrated, I think. I mean, 5K, 6%, I mean, maybe. Uh, Benji's just trying to get deported, I think. I think this is all the <laughs> point. She came, she came fourth in the Olympic road race. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll wait to see. That's why it's exciting. We've got a different parkour here. Um, anyway, Uno you know X is confirmed. Ludwig. Islan Barnes, Otterstad, Loudon, Leith. I think I just saw, I think it was Loudon just training, doing some intervals. Um, I walk this morning. EF uh, are not confirmed, but they have Krista, Krista sorry, Dobel Hickok, who actually did really, really well yeah. at uh, the Vuelta Burgos, which had a prop mountain top finish. She was fourth on Laguna Stenaya. And Kenya Schramm is confirmed. And they have familiar names with Xavi, Nivea Doma, Cromwell, Ruyakovs, Amelusik, and Paladin. It is a strong team on paper, but they haven't really performed that well this year, particularly Nivea Doma was better, I think, in 2021. Ruyakovs should be the GC leader, in my view. I think so as well. I think uh, she's had a very strong season, second in Itzulia. Um, she had third in Tour de Suisse, if I recall. So those combinations show that he can do well in GC. Nivia Roma has been a, a bit disappointing when it comes to her results this year. She was strong on that same black mountain we spoke about earlier. Her climbing was strong there. Same group as Manley and Faulkner that we spoke about earlier. But um, I, I've got a feeling that Rojakers might be a tiny bit better when it comes to the pure climbing compared to Nivia, compared to Nivia Doma. And I feel like the parkour this year of the Tour de France Femme might not have that steep pinch at the end of a stage that might do well for an Iviadoma. There's a stage where there's like a steep mirror climb with about 15, 16k to go where she could do really well, but it's not at the finish. So once you get over it, she's likely going to get beaten in the latter part of a stage like that. So I fear that the parkour might need not be the best for an Iviadoma on paper. But I want to go back to AF for one second to mention that I think Veronica Yours is also underrated when it comes to her climbing together with Double Haycock. So when it comes to those two, it's going to depend on who's best on the day. Yep. They, but yeah, they're, they're not announced yet. The other sprinters teams, one is very clear who their main priority is, at least to me, DSM, Labu, Cool, Vivas, Lippert, Koch, and Pfeiffer, Georgie. Best sprint lead out train and the best sprinter. So she's going to win like they brought Cool, who is probably a top five sprinter in the world, maybe, in her own right. She'll be the last uh, woman for Vibas. Labu, Benji, as already mentioned, will go for GC. She won Volta Burgos GC, hung on against Vollering on Laguna Tanaya. And 
Uh, that's correct. I always know which one. Yes, that is correct. And she'll be <laughs> eligible for the white jersey against Muse, uh, Musich. We think that battle will be. Uh, but Lippert as well, like, be interesting to see. Lippert's like kind of the German star, newly minted champ, national nah. champ. I don't know what stages really suit her, though, compared to some of the other big guns. The other sprint uh, sprinters here, uh, Sarah Tizit, Bring Confolinieri, Brenauer, Catherine Schweinberger, Asensio Lach and Alonso. They were going for the sprints. UAE as well with Bastianelli. Wouldn't be surprised me if she pulled one out of the bag. They're not confirmed yet, but I presume Bastianelli is going. Garcia, and Mavi Garcia Flaming? for GC. Yeah. Exactly. When it comes to Volker, I'm also intrigued by the sprint train, by the way. Oh, Next yeah. to like Quibus and Labu, I also see like Consoni as one of the top five sprinters in the world right now. And she's got a, a damn strong lead out with Gasparini and Persico and so forth, all in one, all in one group there. So I think that's a very strong squad as well when it comes to the sprinting with a bit of an outsider pick when it comes to the climbing, Olivia Barril. I think she was leading or second in GC in one of the races. I think it was at Zulia before they got to a final stage or something, and then she completely fell through the crack. So, hey, who knows? She might have a good climbing performance in this race, but that's mainly what I see for that squad. A squad that was beheaded, in my opinion, was Kofferdis with the injury of Clara Koppenberg in... Uh, in the uh, Giro Don, she broke her hip, and that was a rider I saw fighting for a top 10 position in this race, or even yeah. fighting for a KOM, perhaps, but not happening, so that's unfortunate for that squad. Are there other teams that you're saying, okay, the squad has something godlike to offer in this race? Um, Barbieri at Live Racing's not bad. I think she would, don't be surprised if she steals the sprint, but... Um, she won't be ever a favorite for one. But yeah, Persico looks to be the climbing sprinty girl on Valkar. She's a resistant climber with a, uh, a resistant sprinter, whereas Consoni, at least in the Giro Rosa, didn't seem to uh, get over the pure climbs as well. But she won the last stage, I think, ahead of Barbieri. But yeah, that's all um, Nina Bushman, maybe, on human powered health uh, is the other name I'd throw out there. But that's. That's mostly everyone I want to mention. Now let's get into the stages, uh, stage by stage predictions. Let's see how wrong we can be. The first one, 80.5 Ks, two hour stage, finishing on Champs Elysees. You know the finish well. Can only be one winner to take the inaugural yellow jersey, Lorena Vibas Benji. She put Van Dijk on bike lengths at Balwaza, and yeah, I can't go past her. Can't go past her either, but I do want to say that there's only one person in the peloton that has beaten her in the last two and a half years, and it's it's Balsamo, and she's here. So there is that chance. I'd give it a 20% chance that Balsamo comes out on top over Wibbers. Stuff can go wrong in a sprint. Positioning can go wrong. We've seen Wibbers crash in some occasions, but well, let's be honest, that women's tour crash was because of the parkour and not because of her. That was crazy. So let's hope the parkour on the Champs-Élysées is as simple as the parkour on the Champs-Élysées usually is, because that's pretty straightforward, I'd say. But um, they yeah, Wibbers is... Uh, Trek have, to, Trek have to move up and box her in like Turnison and Wout did to Cab last year and then hope she's just boxed in. Yes, but on the other hand, I'd like to see a glorious sprint next to each other and see how uh, how they stack up against each other personally. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. I think Viva still wins in that situation. Stage 2, 136 Ks. It looks like a sprint stage if you're not looking at it closely enough. Benji brought up the, the finish to this stage. It's actually punchy, like... 500 meters or so maybe 700 meters at four and a half percent average it's not a flat finish now i know that vibas got over the vanberg in ronda van Drenta, but then won the sprint afterwards but this is now putting it in territory Capecchi, Voss, balsamo who are you going with i'm going for balsamo after that sprint i mentioned earlier in tour de swiss that was incredibly strong and I do expect her to have a, a slight upper hand on an uphill sprint compared to Wibus. I think this 4.5% is pretty damn decent to punch on. So Voz and Kopecky get closer to a Wibus on a parkour like this. They might get a bit closer to Balsamo as well, but I'm not 100% sure yet about that. I think I'm going with Balsamo on this finish. This is one of those stages where I do expect a, a group sprint on that final uphill sprint, to be honest. And yeah, I'm going with Balsamo, and I think that gives the uh, advantage for me towards her when it comes to the green jersey, for example. Because the first stage, she's going to be able to take at least second spot in my head, at least. At the moment, stuff can go wrong, you know that. And in the, at this stage, I see her 
beating the likes of Oibu. So that's the advantage there. And then she's likely going to be better than Oibu's in the upcoming stages. And I think stage one might be the decider when it comes to Kopecky versus Balsam win that green jersey fight. Does that make sense to you? No, nah, because I think Voss will win it. And I think Voss wins the <laughs> stage. She was in fine form on the Giro Rosa. I think she comes, she gets bonus seconds on the first stage. And it's going to be interesting to see who takes the yellow jersey. Because if Vibas win stage one, that mm-hmm. someone can come second on both stage one and two, just like in the tour this year, they go into yellow. So yellow is yep. up for grabs here. If Vibas cannot snatch bonus seconds. And so, yeah, but I like Voss for it. I think she's just, she beat Balsamo in a bunch sprint in Juro's a flat sprint. I think she's yep. cooking right now. Uh, stage 333.5 kilometers we have. Sorry, there was, a, there was one cap for climb on each of the first two stages, so there's one point available on uh, KOM, so people will be on the break for that. Gladys for Hills it. has yeah. KOM after two stages. Has okay. to be. Stage three it has some punchy climbs. It has 700 meters 7%, 1,800 meters 7%, and then intermediate sprint point again where I think – I don't know. It'd be interesting to see who goes for that. Then that's before a one kilometer, 11 and a half percent climb before, and then a valley, 700 meters, 7 percent, and then an uphill finish to Eponay. I think, I think this is Kapeki time to me. This is straight, this is screaming Kapeki to me. I think so as well, actually. But when it comes to the stage, this is what I mentioned when it comes to Nivia Doma. If that 1.1 kilometer mirror was at the finish, She's one of the riders that can win this stage. But because it's 16k from the finish line, she would end up going on it and she's not going to be able to get the difference she wants. And because of that, they won't get much out of that. I do expect moves on that 1.1k climb or that hill afterwards to try and send riders forward from teams. And this is maybe an opportunity for teams like SD Works to try and put riders up there. Teams like FDG, an attack by Brown in the valley in between those hills and so forth, stuff like that could lead to Grace Brown winning this stage, for example. So I think they do need to kind of low-key ally against Van Vleuten on stage like this, accidentally, of course. Like, let's say let's say FDG sends Brown up the road and SD Work sends, I don't know, a Mormon up the road. Probably not. She's not the top rider that would do that. Van der Broek block up the road on that kind of stage won't help for GC, but those two riders would be able to potentially stay away on a stage like this. So, but on the other hand, why the hell would on the Brook Block work with Brown in that situation, knowing she's got Kopecky in the back. SD work should go all out for Kopecky on the stage. I think so. Um, but I agree there is a good chance of a counter. A sort of maybe there's a group of 12 on the top of that. Yeah. Uh, Cote de, how do you say it? M- Moutigny. And then someone counters on the descent. And then My no winner? Bothers. Yeah. My winner is still Balsamo. <laughs> I, I think uh, I'm either too bullish on her. They should drop her on that climb. I... She was like fifth over the part of the Berg, right? Or Koppenberg in the Tour of Flanders. That's a pretty steep section, a bit yeah. shorter, but I believe that she might be able to hold on if it's just one hill. Because if it's like Amstel with 10 hills, then it's a problem. And she has if a team that to bring one it hill, back. Exactly. But they, the team of Trek needs to do it like they did in um, oh, that Italian Binda. classic. Yes, Trofeo Binda. Um, I think... If they played like that, where they focus completely on Balsamo in this stage, then they might be able to pull it off towards the end. Okay, I'm going with Kopecky, and I'm going to stay with Kopecky for the next stage too. Stage 426 <laughs> Ks. This is the Chemin Blanc stage. We have, they're pretty flat, most of the sectors. There's climbs that are paved leading up to them. So 1.1 Ks, 8.2%. Then a flat gravel sector. Then a 900 meters, 9.1% flat gravel sector. Then 5Ks, 3%. Uh, that is a gravel sector, but not severely steep. Then 1800 meters, 4%. Then 800 meters, 7%. And then the last gravel sector ends 18 kilometers from the finish, but there's still two punchy climbs to the end. I'm going with Kopecky again. SD Works must try all out on this stage to make it extremely difficult, play multiple riders up the road. And I think. I think Kapeki has to win this one if they have any chance. Okay, I think that the one situation that might remove Kapeki from the equation is if we indeed see those attacks in between the sections. If we, for example, see moves, anticipation moves by riders like 
a Brown or a Royster, for example, for his D-Works, that type of stuff on this parkour. But that's where the tactics of SD-Works will matter a lot on the stage. Will they be focusing hardcore on trying to get people up the road or will they be trying to keep it together so that Kopecky can sprint in the end? That's a situation I'm questioning. Whether they value GC above Kopecky on this stage, stuff like that. I think they need to try both in the sense that you can try and send riders up the road if you're not happy about the situation. You can still try and aim for Kopecky in the defensive positioning in the peloton in that sense. You just need to make sure that if you send someone up the road, that you send them up the road with people that they can beat at the end. I'm going. So who'd you go with? Sorry. Absolutely no clue, but I'm going to go with Kopecky because otherwise I'm indeed getting deported, which I don't want. Next stage, I think, is one that DSM have to try and keep for a sprint. There's not too many sprints pure easy sprints like the first stage 175 kilometers long there's some sort of rolling climbs of shallow gradient the last of which has some bonus seconds according to this profile on it at 155 k's to go 1500 meters 4.2 percent that could actually split apart the race and make it hard for dsm in the 20k rolling flat to keep this together for a sprint they do have the team for it though the team is so strong uh, with Lip and Co. So I'm still going with Vivas, but I expect this to be a close run thing with it being split apart and Vivas having to come back on that climb. I'm not sure I see the climb as hard enough personally. I I think DSM will manage. I think yeah. I'm going for... On one end, I kind of want an outsider to win the sprint, you know? Like, I don't want to shout Vivas for every single sprint stage. So... Unlike what I said earlier, indeed, Balsamo has only beaten uh, Wibbers and nobody else has, but I'm going to go for Consoni because why the hell not? Yeah, I see that. Consoni, she's fast and she won the last stage of the Giro Rosa. Stage six, the last stage, a lot of these stages have been quite similar with sort of rolling clients. We haven't had a category two yet before the last two stages this is stage six 128 k's again rolling climbs this is a bit steeper than the previous stage though like I don't think Trek shouldn't allow Vibus to make this finish to me. And there's bonus seconds on the top of a one kilometer, 6.4% climb with 100.5 Ks to go. I'm going with Balsamo for the stage. I still think it will be a group sprint. Uh, I think Trek should, a break could certainly win because DSM, I don't think will be like, we're going to pace all day on this sort of parkour with like 1400 meters, 7% in the middle. So I'm going with Balsamo, but again, a counterattack on the three kilometer four percent climb, nine Ks from the finish could make that difficult for them. I'm just gonna follow you. There's not much to add on this stage, I think. I think I'm calling Balsamo for this one as well. When it comes to all these stages, we're going for like Peloton results all the time. Do you think there are situations possible where breakaways win where Adriano Marcus goes up the road and the Peloton is a bit too late when it comes to responding? Because we've seen that yeah. last year in the latest tour of Norway by the SM, you know? Yeah, it is after, I think, the fourth stage, after because people will lose big time on that stage, and so, and I think deliberately so, and then that opens up, particularly these stages like this where maybe not multiple teams want to control this stage six and it's one team, you know, then there's options, same with stage five. So, I, But the first ones, I think, with yellow on offer, with bonus seconds, no, nah, I think peloton has to have that in control and i've not we've not mentioned anime van vluten i think she should just be playing it easy on all these yep. stages to be honest we just i mean maybe that's too conservative she's an aggressive racer but if i was her right. ds i'd be like there's no need for any hero moves the two exactly. tdff have exclusive with one in the last two and th- this is stage seven where it really kicks off this is this is the hardest stage of the race 126.5 k's three cat ones called the betty ballon Nine and a half k's, eight percent, incredibly difficult. Then the Col du Place of Arsenal, seven point one k's, eight point three percent. Then a reasonably long descent, which is some flat sections in it uh, of about forty kilometers. Before the Grand Ballon, fourteen k's, six and a half percent. There's then about seven kilometers of false flat descent to Le Markstein, Stein, rather. Uh, so there's bonus seconds a third of the way up Grand Ballon. And I think AVV wins the stage, Benji, and wins the race overall already on this stage. I think Cavalli second, Bollering third. I think so as well. And 
yeah, it's pretty simple. Movistar delivers Van Vleuten to the Petit Ballon. She might even already attack on the Petit Ballon. I would if I was her, most likely. It's going to be a godlike um, I would. stage. The problem is, will there be footage already at the foot of the Petit Ballon? Because if she attacks at the foot of the Petit Ballon and we don't see it, I'm going to riot. Like, I'm straight up going to riot. Yeah, I mean, it happens in the Dauphiné last stage. I remember Dauphiné last stage, 2020, was craziness, apparently, according to the riders. But if I'm Van Vleuten in that valley before Grand Ballon, I don't want to have to be managing a group if I'm her. Yeah. Like, if there's a group of 15 riders, multiple teammates and other teams in that flat section, I have no interest in managing that dynamic before the final climb. So... I would attack, as Benji said, on one of the first two climbs. Maybe and the second one's fine too. This actually brings up the fact that we spoke earlier about this rider could go for KOM and so forth, but scratch that because... She, she's winning it. If on Vleuten goes early, she's winning KOM. You're right. Yeah. It's simple as that. So throw it at all off the table. Von Vleuten is likely winning KOM in this race as a consequence of her having to go early to prevent moves in those valleys just before the final climb, like you just mentioned. Last stage, 123.5 kilometers. It's not overall as hard as the previous stage before, but it has a pure mountaintop finish. It has a 2.5 k's, 8% is the first climb with 50 k's to go, then a oh, crest there, then with 74 k's to go, they have the Ballon d'Alsace. How long is that? 9 k's, 7% descent, and then La Super Planche de Belfi. We just saw it on stage seven of the men's race, Jonas against Pog. It's the same finish, 7 Ks, 8.6% with the steep travel finish. I oh, can a break win this because there's 50 Ks of flat to control at the start. And then it's not that hard again after that little punch for 2.5 Ks, 8%. Nah. And really? If you're Von Vleuten, and you want to win the final stage in yellow. Yeah, she probably would. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> she won in pink in the Giro Rosa the stage she crashed, right? I think uh, she yes, she did. She did. She did. Yeah. So you're probably right. I was trying to hope for a break. I was looking at maybe the EF riders like or Christian Faulkner. We haven't mentioned a Christian Faulkner. I really think on those stages. Like, doesn't fit. <sighs> Who win? Like, she can top 10 GC, yes, but. I think this one she can. I think this one she can is her best okay. chance from the break. Um, but she needs like, a solid lead. We're saying break, but is there an opportunity for riders to launch on the Ballon d'Alsace and try and outplay Movistar that way? But no, if no. you're Von Vleuten, you respond to that, eh? AVV will just ride her. She'll just press the interval button and just do yeah, that but and you can't attack. Yeah, but if she does that, then she might end up in a situation where she might be able to get rolled attacked in the valley before Planche de Belfia. True. So maybe she'll have countered by then. I don't know. I think attacking AVV on a climb like that is is difficult for anybody yeah. except maybe Cavalli. Um, I, um, yeah. I'm still going to go with Faulkner for this stage. Or Labu, if she's fallen out of GC completely, she could do it. Or Music. I think I see a move from... People on the court, there's Moulier to get ahead of things. And on the ball on the south, I see Van Vleuten going YOLO with our yellow jersey and catching everybody and winning this stage and claiming full dominance over this Tour de France fan. Yep, I think you're probably right on balance. Okay, well, we've already said we... <laughs> I don't think we need to uh, go too much into our GC predictions. Let's nah. put it... Put it there, Benji. I think Van Vleuten wins the race overall. I think SD Works might try, but unless AVV crashes, it still won't be enough because she is so superior on the climbs and the, the parkour is fucking hard. That's stage seven. So I think AVV wins as long as she stays upright. I agree. I'm, uh, I'm also on board with that. I see Cavalli podiuming this race when it comes to um, results. I, I would like to see... La Boo top five, but I will say I'm low key biased there because I, I've got a feeling I'm becoming a low key fan of La Boo over the year. But I also think she can definitely do it. Like, when I think it comes she wins to Giro too. Don, what's sorry? I think she wins white easily as well. I think, I think so as well. I agree there. I think she wins white. I think Musici and Van Andre are both competitive, but not competitive enough, 
competitive enough, yes, English, against Labou, for example. I think Labou had issues on the on the heat stage to Cesena in the Giro d'On, and that basically to her GC away until she eventually still ended ninth. So I I think she can do better in this Tour de France one when it comes to GC than Giro d'On. Yeah, and I think she's super light rider, like really small, like pure climber. I think, yeah, Labou, her shape looks pretty good uh, to me. Like she won... She won the Giro Rosa uphill finish to Paso Manvia 10Ks, 8.1%. Uh, she she won that pretty handily. I think that was from the breakaway, though. Yeah. So, But still, you you know, she's another one for Ploche de Belfi from the break if she's at a GC. Uh, for KOM, AVV, I think, wins just because the parkour design. There's just not enough ca- early Category 1s or Category 2s in the race for the break. So I just mm-hmm. it has to be AVV. Yep. I agree. There's not much else to add. And then we get to green and that's where I think we disagree. That's where I will go for Balsamo. Voss is boss. No Kapeki uh, for both of us? I think... I don't think she's good enough in the pure sprints. I agree. I think that's the problem. I think... Because Voss in the pure sprints looks... Yeah, I, I that's my problem with her. Balsamo is the perfect blend. But I think Voss. Um, but yeah, the intermediate sprints might swing it too. Like, for example, on the la- uh, on the second last stage, the intermediate sprints after the long climbs, could Voss get in the break or Balsamo? Uh, again, on stage six, the intermediate Satellite sprints. Satellite rider for Longo Borghini in terms of Balsamo and so forth? Or am I thinking too much when it comes to tactics here? I don't know about that for Longo <laughs> Borghini. But yeah, I, th- I think Voss takes it. And because that's mainly based on, I think, like she'll beat Balsam on stage two, and you, we disagree on that. So I think it's <laughs> ABV, of course, is the heavy favorite. There's no betting market that I can see, but she'd be priced very, very, very short. But you never know what can happen. It's eight stages, what the weather could be like, what could happen on a descent. If SD Works and Trek really do team up to try and light up this, you know, the race in the early stages, at least the parkour. Offers something to try, something like that, particularly on stage four. But yeah, any last thoughts on the race, Benji? Um, any really big outsiders or people that you think can do well or could surprise? Honestly, I just have the, gen- the generic message that I'm very much looking forward to this race, where it's the first Tour de France Femme. We had the Le Tour Femina back in the day, but I don't really count it as the real Tour de France Femme. And now we've got so he's bringing us a Tour de France farm, which is going to be, honestly, I think it will be a really good race. And I'm glad it's backloaded because, again, it would have been really sad if it was decided in the early part of this. Do we call it a Grand Tour? I think we call it Grand Tour, right? Yeah. They call it a Girodona Grand Tour. So this is a Grand Tour as well. But I, I just hope that it's a, a race where every single stage is fought to, to the bone. Not literally, but... When it comes to action the entire way through. Like, the men's Tour de France this year has been crazy compared to some of the previous editions. I've got a feeling that this first Tour de France farm will be just as crazy. And I think Van Vleuten being a rider that goes all out very early in those mountain stages will also make that even a better viewing experience than, for example, stages where there's being waited until the last climb, for example. And that's because... It's also a tactical advantage for her to go early against what is that could roll attacks on her later, for example. But that's my view on things. I hope she'll lead well the top 10s in the sprint stage. That's a random take I'm throwing out there. I hope Labu La top fives, for example. And I'm going to switch my case when it comes to KOM in the early days from Gladys for Hills to Konora Go. I think that would be pretty cool. I like think... those early two days. I think overall, I've not we've not spoken about Vollering enough. I've not like she's mm-hmm. probably been the second best GC rider, and like she won all stages in GC of Itzulia. She, I think, was uh, high in the split on stage three of Burgos, but then won the mountain top finish. Came third GC there, won Brabant's third Liège, third Flesh, second Amstel, and I think she won the women's tour last year, but third in Giro Rosa last year. She didn't do. The Jira Rosa. She's had a fair preparation for this. She only did the 
Dutch national champs since Burgos in the end of May, she should be firing. Um, but I just, I, I just don't see her pure climbing against AVV is good enough. Agreed, but I feel like Cavalli, I rate higher when it comes to GC at the moment because while while Volring did win on that Laguna Zanaya, for example, I expected her to gain more time than 17 seconds on Labu, 37 seconds on Muzic, 44 seconds on Double Hickok and so forth. To be able to top three at Tour de France Femme, I think she might need a bit more than that. Am I being harsh there? Yeah, I kind of agree, to be honest. And you look at Cavalli, like Mont Ventoux, Denevelle Challenge, she won Gio Rosa. She was clearly the second best. So she has the shape and she's improved so much this year, like one flesh, one arm, still ridiculous. So, and it's Julia where uh, Volering beat her. It, it wasn't the same sort of stage design. So yeah, I, I do have Cavalli slightly ahead of Volering if she can keep that shape, but be wary of Volering with that long prep into this. Uh, she sh- it should be a big focus for her and SD Works. But that's all from us. It's been really enjoyable doing a different preview, actually. I've enjoyed just looking at things differently with the... Yes first ever Tour de France Femme Avec Swift. Hope you enjoy watching the race. Benji and I are going to Paris for the first stage on Sunday. Uh, And yeah, we might see you there. Ciao.